ISO. It's the thing that makes your video brighter, right? Well, yes, kind of, but mostly no. ISO is a surprisingly complex topic and one that took me a long time to wrap my head around. And some of the things I learned are completely counterintuitive, like using lower ISO in low light situations. Wait, what? Yes, we'll get to that. I wanted to make this video for people who aren't just satisfied with knowing what button does what on a camera. If you're anything like me, you want to know why it works the way it works. So in this video, we're going to dive deep into how exactly ISO works and come out the other end with some practical takeaways for your everyday shooting. Feel free to use timestamps to jump around the video, but if you're a true nerd like me, watch the whole thing. All right, let's get undone. Oh damn, that's the other guy's thing. I'll have to come up with my own thing. First of all, let's bust some myths. You probably heard from all those exposed triangle videos that ISO changes the sensitivity of your camera. Well, that is just plain wrong, and let's see why. I'm not gonna bore you with history, but it's important to understand that ISO came to us from the film days. It's a measure of a film stock's sensitivity to light, which is determined by the size of grains of the silver halide in the emulsion. Bigger grains absorb more light, pretty straightforward. So at the beginning of the digital era, ISO was used as an easy way to communicate sensor sensitivity to people who were used to shooting film. And that's about it. From this point on, film to digital analogies lose most of their usefulness. Because when it comes to digital, the ISO number that you see in your camera settings is a number made up by the manufacturer, and it's almost meaningless. First reason is labeling. ISO for film is exact science. ISO for digital is mostly manufacturer's opinion on where the image looks best. That's why, for example, Sony's 800 ISO and Canon's 800 ISO are not exactly the same thing. There can be a difference as large as a stop of exposure depending on the intricacies of sensor design. Second and more important reason is that film stock analogies were misleading in the first place, because you can't change the sensitivity of your camera as long as you can't swap out a sensor like you can a roll of film. You are stuck with whatever sensitivity your sensor had when it left the factory. And vice versa, you can't change the ISO of a film stock, but you can do so on a digital camera. So if you can't change the sensitivity of your sensor, then what does changing the ISO do? Well, it reflects the change in the digital gain. Upping the ISO amplifies the signal being recorded. And the difference between ISO and gain, it's not just semantics. Understanding how gain works has some pretty serious implications for how we should expose when shooting on digital cameras. To understand gain, let's quickly brush up on how a digital sensor works. The sensor consists of photosensitive diodes arranged into a grid. Any light that falls onto the sensor registers as an electrical signal. More light means stronger signal, but if there's not enough light, it's hard for the sensor to make out what is signal and what is noise. For you see, just by powering the sensor, your camera already creates some baseline level of noise. And if there's not enough light, the signal can't break the noise flow, so you don't see a picture. There's only noise. Now here's where gain comes in. You can supply more voltage to your sensor to make it work harder. It's literally the same as turning up the gain knob on your guitar amp. The signal gets amplified, so your picture gets brighter on the monitor. But there is a catch, and a huge one. For you see, the noise floor also gets raised proportionately. If you double the signal, you double the noise. Now, this is hugely important to understand. And if you only take away one thing from this video, it's this. You can't raise exposure with ISO. Your camera does not get any more sensitive to light. Brightness of the picture on your monitor is not the same thing as exposure. Increasing the gain does not get you more light. Frankly, I'm amazed at how many people shooting video don't understand this simple fact. And we'll get to why when we talk about noise reduction. But for now, let's examine gain. Gain is measured in decibels, and each 6 dB of gain is equal to one stop of light, or doubling of ISO. Some professional cameras, like my FX6 here, can be switched to show gain instead of ISO. But even if yours can't, it's better to start thinking about ISO in terms of gain, and the reason has to do with native ISO. Now, if you watched at least one filmmaking channel here on YouTube, you've probably heard that you should shoot at native ISO. You get the cleanest image and the highest dynamic range of your camera, right? Yeah, but why? What is native ISO? Native ISO means one thing only. 0 dB of gain added to the signal. 
It's the power level at which the sensor is calibrated by the manufacturer to capture the highest dynamic range and the best signal-to-noise ratio. Different cameras may have different native ISO ratings, but all of them equate to 0 dB of gain. Some sensors are equipped with two sets of gain circuits for each pixel, and that allows us to switch between them without adding any gain and thus any more noise. This is called dual native ISO and it's a killer feature. It's like having two sensors in one camera. It's the closest thing we have to swapping out a roll of film, and it should be way higher on your camera shopping list than it probably is. So if you forget about ISO and start thinking in terms of gain, your life gets much easier, because you always know that 0 dB of gain means native ISO, regardless of which picture profile or dual ISO mode you are in. You don't need to do any math or remember crazy sets of numbers, and you always know how far away from native ISO your gain is. For example, I know through testing that for my camera at lower base ISO 6 dB of gain is completely fine. 12 dB of gain is about as high as I would go, and if I need 3 or more stops, I'm better off switching to higher base ISO and stepping down with ND. You might have noticed that native ISO is different for different picture profiles. For example, on my FX6 the native ISO is 800, but that's only for S-Log3. If I'm shooting s cinetone which is a what-you-see-is-what-you-get type of profile, the native ISO is 320. Why 320? Again, with ISO the numbers don't actually mean what you think they mean. It doesn't mean that the camera applied negative gain, and it doesn't mean that s cinetone is one stop darker than log. The sensitivity did not change, it's still 0 dB. ISO 320 is just a number that you would have to put into a light meter to get correct exposure for middle grey, for that particular picture profile. Log is flat, as cinetone is not, and middle grey falls in a different place on the waveform, so if you want to match their exposure, you would have to use different ISOs. I know this may sound a bit confusing, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. ISO is a misleading number, and I firmly believe that for us video people, it's not the correct variable to use. What you really want to know is gain, because zero gain is the sweet spot regardless of picture profile, dual ISO mode and even the camera. So whatever you are shooting, if you are at zero gain, you know you are getting the best picture. Ok, gotcha, you might say, but what if I'm in a low light situation? What if I have to really crank up the gain? You've probably seen charts like this. They basically show the allocation of information in your log image between shadows and highlights. The middle point is middle grey, which is your 80% grey card. Now, here's the big thing. When you up the gain, you lose dynamic range, you lose stops in the shadows to increase noise, but you don't actually gain any stops in the highlights because the sensor sensitivity hasn't changed, so the clipping point hasn't changed either. On the contrary, by increasing ISO, you make your highlights clip earlier. It really bears repeating, increasing gain doesn't increase light sensitivity. It only pushes both the signal and noise up the waveform. So if you are shooting a dark low-key scene, where there is a lot of information in the shadows, increasing your ISO actually ruins your picture further. Your scene is already sitting in the noise floor, and now you are raising it. No bueno. You are better off pushing the noise floor down by lowering your ISO below the native, which means applying negative gain. I know it's a mind bender and completely counterintuitive, but bear with me. Negative gain works exactly as it sounds it should. It's the complete opposite of increasing gain. Your signal gets weaker, you lose dynamic range in the highlights, but the noise floor also gets lowered. So the dynamic range is now distributed more towards the shadows, which is where your image lives if you are shooting a dark scene. So remember, lower the gain below zero to get cleaner shadows. Ok, so far we have established three things. ISO refers to gain, native ISO means zero gain, and increasing gain reduces your dynamic range by raising the noise floor. Now, it's important to note about native ISO that the highest dynamic range thing is only true assuming you are shooting in the flattest log profile available on your camera. The light we see is linear. More light means more information. But the camera needs to compress this linear gamma into a logarithmic gamma by curving the top and bottom of the graph. This way the information can be evenly distributed between the stops of dynamic range. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, it's because your native ISO and your log curve are interlinked. They are set in relation to each other. If you expose for middle grey correctly, your shadows should land above the noise floor in the log waveform. 
This is super important. You get the best image from your sensor by keeping your log waveform above the noise floor. This is why you might have heard all that exposed to the right advice. For video, it should really be called exposed to the top. And it means get your log waveform as high as possible without clipping the highlights to record the cleanest signal. Then in post, push down the exposure before applying LUT or a transform. Again, because LUTs and transforms expect you to have exposed correctly for whatever middle gray is for your particular log curve. I hope this made some sense. To reiterate, if you are shooting in log, using the native ISO and overexposing is paramount. So much so, that if you are messing with gain at all, that means you are compromising dynamic range and adding noise. And if you don't care about dynamic range, then why should log at all? In fact, shooting in a standard picture profile becomes a better option at this point. Log and noise don't go well together at all. Any weirdness recorded in log gets greatly amplified when conforming to Rec. 709 in post-production. So when shooting log, you really want to turn off all in-camera noise reduction, sharpening, compression and stay clear above the noise floor. This way you get the cleanest camera negative to work with in post. And if the baseline noise shows itself, you can pretty safely use the noise reduction tool in your NLE with little to no degradation to overall image quality. But remember, noise reduction in camera combined with noise reduction in post is a recipe for disaster. If you are increasing gain and your image does get muddled by noise, then your in-camera noise reduction becomes the superior option. You see, camera manufacturers know their sensors very well. They can fine-tune their noise reduction to their particular noise pattern at each gain level. And since a lot of the noise is not only luma but chroma, that means that the color information also gets messed up by increasing gain. And we are working with bare pattern sensors here, so the color information is already somewhat incomplete. There's a lot of guessing going on by the camera. So again, if you jack up the gain, you are better off leaving the color interpretation to your camera. And that means using a what you see is what you get type of profile. This is where you let your camera apply that pesky color science we've been hearing about for years. A term I kinda hate, but it's actually applicable here. And this is exactly why you might have thought that ISO is an exposure tool. Because you can increase it and up to a point your image gets brighter, but not noticeably worse. And people are saying stuff like, this camera is good in low light, you can shoot up to 6400 ISO and it's pretty clean. Well, all that means is that built-in noise reduction is well tuned for that sensor. But the image does get worse and it is degraded, for you see, noise reduction is not a free lunch. It comes with a price. By fighting the noise, you average out the pixels, losing fine detail and color fidelity. Your image gets blurry and the colors start falling apart. And to combat that, your camera paves over with digital sharpening and raises the saturation to make up for lost color gradations. At high enough gain levels, these processes combined give you that dreaded ugly ass video look. Well, if you survived that information deluge, my respect and thanks to you. Now, for the TLDR crowd, I want to summarize everything we've discovered so far into 7 practical actionable takeaways that you can implement in your everyday shooting right now. First is that ISO is not an exposure tool. Increasing gain doesn't get you more light. Want better image? Pour more light on that sensor. Don't get fooled by the monitor. Brightness is not the same thing as exposure. You can lower the gain to get cleaner shadows, but lose dynamic range in the highlights. Use it when you are shooting really dark scenes. You can't change your camera's sensitivity to light. Base sensitivity is calibrated at native ISO, which is equal to zero gain in all circumstances. Dual native ISO should be way higher on your camera features priority list. Higher base ISO means higher signal to noise ratio and higher SNR means lower light levels needed to achieve exposure. And exposure trumps everything. If you want maximum dynamic range, shoot in log, exposing for middle gray. If you have highlight headroom, overexpose, move that log waveform to the top. When shooting log, always shoot at native ISO and turn off all in-camera noise reduction and sharpening. If you are in a run and gun situation and you have no choice but to expose with the ISO, abandon log and use a what you see is what you get type of profile instead. If you are jacking up the gain, you will get better results by letting the camera do the dirty work and present you with the final image rather than trying to fix your messed up log image in post. 
But remember, excessively high ISO leads to crappy image via noise reduction, sharpening and saturation. Just because your footage appears clean, it doesn't mean that it's good. Learn your camera, do some testing, study the ISO performance and determine what is the acceptable range for your work. Well guys, I hope it's been helpful. Tell me down in the comments below if you learned something new from this. Believe it or not, this is not all I have to say on the topic of ISO. I'm planning to do a couple more videos on how ISO works with RAW and what is the exposure index. If you have other questions regarding camera tech, let me know because I'm happy to dive into them. But for now, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for watching and goodbye.